Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you feel within us a love for our Father. You feel within us a love for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you feel within us that sweet fellowship with you so that we desire nothing, none else but you, your word and your presence. I come against any, any hindering spirit that would stand in the way of that sweet fellowship. I break its power, I break its pull and its hold in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you. Give us ears to hear, a heart to receive the anointed word of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, if y'all got that, y'all y'all got the word today. That was good. 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 Cause y'all know I'm, I, I y'all know me a little bit that I be scripturally challenged. There's always three or four messages floating around. So the challenge is is, is the, you know, y'all heard me talk about the overflow, and I was just jotting down a few notes, and as I was jotting, it was expanding. Because, you know, when I, when, when I know I'm going to minister, not ministering all the time, your pastor can preach six months on the series. <laughs> so I have to, I have, I have to hit, hit and quit and go. <laughs> and trust God to, to give, you, give you what he's prepared for you. But that, that, you know, praise and worship is so important because it sets the heart. It prepares the scene. It prepares hearts to receive. It, 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 it attunes us to the Spirit of God to hear. If we would come in and have a little bit of life of private praise and worship, uh, then things would flow. But we, we, we need to repent for busyness, and it could be needed, supposedly, busyness. But it's about priorities and setting things in right. Let me put the Word of God first. Let me put my private worship time first and then let's see everything flow out of that because our public life needs to be fueled by our private life you know the old testament talks about the outer court the inner court and the holy of holies the outer court i call uh, uh the world the inner court i call the church the body of christ what i do inside the house, but the Holy of Holies is just me and God all by ourselves. So what we do in the outer court, in the inner court, needs to stem for what we've done in the Holy of Holies. When the, when the word says pray without ceasing, to me that doesn't mean I pray all the time, but it means I'm God inside mine and I hear the Spirit of God all the time. I have fellowship with him. Romans 6 talks about unbroken fellowship with God. It talks about water baptism, breaking that tie to the world, to your old self, so that I can live in unbroken fellowship with him. And we need to, we need to start tapping into the advantage of being filled with God. God, the Holy Spirit, dwells within us. We need to be aware and alert to that fact and start being God inside mind. That was the first message, being God inside mind. Knowing that the Spirit of God dwells in us, God himself loves us so much that he, by the Holy Ghost, lives in us. And that, that needs to be the key to our Christian walk, that I'm a God man, I'm a God woman, because God is inside. That's awesome. That's awesome. We see the mighty acts of God in the Old Testament where the Spirit of God came upon them and they prophesied and they did great works. Well, how much more? Not the Spirit of God coming upon us, but the Spirit of God dwelling within us. Uh, and, and, and that's part of that falling in love with him, being attuned to his presence. We got to get to that point where we are walking, talking, and living, acting like him. 
Matter of fact, let's, let's go to John 15, 7, I believe it is. Hallelujah. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now that's that I, I use that as a, a prayer secret. But if you start with verse one, I'm the vine, and my father is the husband. The husband being the one that takes care of the vine. Talks about bearing fruit. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he teareth or taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, he purges it. I say prune. I'm, I'm from Central Florida. Orange trees used to prune trees. Cuts away that dead branch. That's all it is. That it might bring forth more fruit. Now, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. Abide in me and I in you. Verse 5, without me you can do nothing. You know, back to the pruning trees. You would cut the dead part of the branch off, but you would cut into the green. Because if you just broke off the, the, the bad part, it would still be tipped with the dead. So the good couldn't grow out through a dead shoot, that dead end. So you would cut through it. But to protect the exposed live part of the branch that you cut into, we would put tar over it to protect it from the elements, from the insects, so it would heal and continue to grow. Now I look at that cutting as the word of God. It exposes our error. It exposes our stuff that we ought not to be doing. The word exposes. We need a continual exposure to the word of God. The key word here is abide. I don't leave and come back. I don't do it casually. I'm actually abiding in the word. So as the word exposes our flaws and errors, and it may not be sin even, just stuff we need to tighten up on. And we cut into, we cut that off of our lives. The talk to me is the oil of the spirit of God. The presence of God mixed with the word of God that we are abided in puts us in a position where we bear much fruit. Just that simple. Just that simple. Be God inside mind. Have a loving fellowship with the word of God. And be conscious of his presence. To the, to the point where when you think about saying it, the Holy Ghost pricks your heart and you cut it off. Faith, Galatians 5, 6 works by love. Hallelujah. Matthew 12, 36. Hallelujah. Now, I'm, I'm moving on to the supper message. I figure I can't pitch them all, so I, I just touched a little bit of everything. Come on now. <coughs> but I say unto you that every outer word that men shall speak, they shall, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Again, in the Amplified, but I tell you, on the day of judgment, men will have to give account for every idle, inoperative, non-working word they speak. Watch your mouth. Message two. I heard a, I heard a message oh decades ago now. The use and abuse of the tongue by Derek Prince. He preached so hard on watching what you say that you, you were conscious of every little negative thing you said. But we speak words so casually. Last week I talked about, I just mentioned it, 
cliches. We, we, we end up speaking cliches. And I went to Job and told you where W the, w the Trouble came from. We need to understand what we're saying and why we're saying it. And don't be so quick to just say stuff. Well, hey. Pass us in the house. Good morning. <laughs> we need to not just say stuff. Uh, uh, I was on the job just a few days ago, and a lady said something about, I'm confused, or the stuff just driving me crazy. I said, don't say that about yourself. It, it does, the stuff just drive me crazy. Getting defensive about what she was saying. And sometimes you get an opportunity to minister the word to them and, they, and people will still reject it. And these aren't just worldly people, these are people in the church. Just say words that are contrary to the word. Starting off with lesson one, <laughs> abiding in the word. If you abide in the word, build the word in your heart in abundance, then what comes out of your mouth is going to be the word. We need to realize that words are containers of our faith. Words change and create our world. Genesis 1, God said, and it was. God said, God said, God said. We are made in the image of God. We are the only part of God's creation that has the power to speak words. Your parent can be talk a word and mimic something, but he doesn't have the creative power of words. Words create your world. You are shackled by what you say. You can change your world, you can change your very uh, uh, atmosphere of your life by the words you speak. You don't say stuff like, y'all driving me crazy. I tell people, don't drive down that street, you may not be able to get back. Your words set you apart from all of God's creation. Abide in the word, speak the word. When you get the word in your heart in abundance, then when you speak out of the abundance of your heart, then that's when you see the manifestation. Confession is a great teaching, a great teaching. Confession is saying what God said. Your words will build faith or your words will open the door to the, to the wicked one. Think about this, this way. I'm a king and I'm, an, and I'm a priest. In the natural, when the king says something, his subjects bring the past. Just think about it. A king says something and somebody gonna make it happen. If I'm a king and I say something, somebody's gonna make it happen. Either the angels of God are gonna work with me or demonic forces are gonna be allowed to work with my wrong words. Think about it. Don't just say stuff. But if you abide in the word and build the word in your heart in abundance and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks then you're going to see the word manifest in your life you are responsible faith comes by hearing right and hearing by the word of god so you need to stand the word stand the word stand the word but check this out if faith comes by hearing Faith is released by saying, the word is not me even in my mouth. The word works. It is the key ingredient to your life. I taught a message once entitled, your mouth, the master key to your life. Your mouth. So if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the most, I'll say it this way, the most important voice you will ever hear is your own. Your pastor has an anointed word. What do you do with the word? Do you meditate it? Do you get it in your heart? Do you go back and listen to it again? 
Do you look up the scriptures that are brought to you and get them in your heart? There's an anointing upon the past because the past was put in place. So even though you study on your own, you got the Holy Ghost in your own, there's an anointing because he put the fivefold ministry in place to equip the body. So there's an anointing in the house from the pastor. But the most important voice you will hear is your own. What are you speaking over your life out of your mouth? What are you speaking out of your life out of your mouth? Isaiah 55. Verses 10 and 11. You've heard this, but it's going to apply. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not tender, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11. So shall my words be that come out, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where I sit. In the Amplified, verse 11, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect or useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I said. Now think about the words you speak out of your own mouth. Do you want it to accomplish what you said? So when you say, y'all driving me crazy, you don't want that to happen. When you say, uh, uh, that tickled me to death, you don't want it to happen. Because you start releasing forces that somewhere along the line are going to try to manifest itself. That's why the confession of the word is so necessary because to me it's like you're, you're rooting out decades of bad speaking. You, you are like, it's like drilling for oil. It, 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 goes, it, it just goes down and down and deeper and deeper and deeper and uh, Leroy Thompson uses the term, you hit a gusher. You build faith into you so hard. That's the, 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 the abundance I'm talking about. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing, hearing, hearing brings, builds faith, saying, release faith. Psalms 40, I think, says the tongue is the pen of the ready writer. You write the word on your heart when you speak the word. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. And while I'm, I'm there, y'all know Joshua 1 8, I hope. But he talks about meditating the word. Meditating the word. Meditating the word. How do you meditate the word? You hear it, you see it. You speak it. You hear it. You say it. You speak it. You speak the word of God. You speak the word of God. You build, you, you get the crud out by speaking the word. I shall meditate in the day and night. I build the word in my heart all the time by speaking it, listening to it. I mean, I got a, a couple of Bible apps that will read the word to me. I mean, get you, get you, get you a, a, a play that in your city changer as you're driving to work. Jacksonville is a huge city. By the time you get to work, a half hour, forty five minutes of, of driving, you can turn your car into a Bible school just by playing Bible tapes and playing anointed teachers and preachers. Watch your mouth. Lesson two. I got four messages. I'm preaching them all today. <laughs> Proverbs 4. And this is the one I thought I was going to do earlier in the week. The last week I told you I was going to do a, a primal faith. So we'll see. 
Proverbs 4, 20. And as I was listening to Proverbs 4 and reading Proverbs 4, there's so much good stuff in Proverbs before I get there. But you know, there's 31 days in about six or seven months. There's 31 Proverbs. You ought to read one every day. Not as your, your, your main time. But Proverbs gives you wisdom, and wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 4, verse 1. Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attempt to know understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my, I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. Sounds like abiding the word, right? Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not her, meaning wisdom, meaning the word. And she shall preserve thee. Love her. Love the word. Start about talking about loving the presence of God, loving the word of God. Talk about sin is a, a love problem. Hmm? Fall in love with the word, it'll keep you out of sin. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, and there's no wisdom apart from the word of God. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her. No, exalt her. We've gotten so confused in this country because we've gotten away from the word of God. We, we, we exalt sin as everybody's right, and we put down righteousness because we've gotten away from the word. Exalt her, not political correctness, not opinion. Learn how to preach the word and love people. Just give them the word because the political correctness of our society won't get people saved. And I told you like last week that it's on us. This world needs us. They need our light to shine. They need us to lovingly set a standard before them and not compromise because it's the easy thing to do. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. Need a promotion on your job? Exalt the word of God in your life. She said, bring thee to honor when thou embrace her. Look at words like, use the words like, exalt the word, love the word, embrace the word. You ought to have a love affair with the word of God. Come on. You ought to have a love affair with the word of God. The word of God ought to speak when anything happens. When you respond, it ought to be the word of God that comes out of your mouth. Mm. All of this is good. But, verse 12, when thou goest, thy step shall not be straightened, and when thou runneth, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction, let her not go, keep her, for she is thy life. Have we embraced the word of God that is our very, very life? That is our very, very life. Don't enter into the path of the wicked and don't go in the way of evil men. If you discard the word of God, you don't know what's right or what's wrong. For verse 16, for they sleep not, talk about evil, except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fail. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The word is a light unto your path. You can't even see where you're going apart from the word of God. When you see Christians talking crazy or agreeing with the world, it's because they don't have a life hooked up with the word. The word brings light. It, 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 it shows you the way to go. Verse 20. My son, attend to my words, 
incline thy ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eye, but keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health and healing to all thy flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thy eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. And verse 27 is we have removed thy foot from evil. Verse 20, attend. That's deliberate. That's deliberate. That's a deliberate action. Incline. Listen closely. Listen to the word. Attend to the word. Verse 23, keep thy heart. Protect your heart. Don't talk any kind of way, verse 24. Look straight into the word. Consider where you're walking, verse 26. Let your ways be established in the word of God. Verse 23, out of your heart are the issues or life forces, the issues of life. Your very life is dependent on the word. If we are lacking anything, if we are lacking healing, look in the word. Find healing scriptures. Build those scriptures in your heart. Confess those words. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Go through the gospels. Everywhere Jesus brought healing to somebody, everywhere he raised the dead, Say, so if he did it for them, he'll do it for me. God is no respect of persons. But check this out. God is a respect of faith. And how do you build faith? You build faith by the word of God. You need finances to be manifest in your life in a greater measure. There's hundreds of scriptures dealing with prosperity. Find 10 of them. Find 20 of them. Make it a positive confession. And build it in your heart. Build it in your heart. Use the word like medicine. The doctor says take these this prescription three times a day, two times a day. It's something when you search them out, write them out. This this little this little card here. Just confess your scriptures that were personalized. That's all. That's all. That's all it is. That's all it is. But this is talking about my covenant. The light that self in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Psalms 37 4. Mm. Philippians 4 19. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. All means all. I don't care if it's a family problem, or a children problem, a sickness problem, or a financial problem. My God shall supply all my needs. Build that in your heart. And when we started off from after the song about loving him, falling in love with him, that's it. Because once you learn that, that God loves you, that Jesus died for you, it puts you on a different level of faith, knowing that God is going to meet every need. It puts you on a different level, knowing that God is it's going to meet your every need. Hebrews 11. Lesson 4. Can y'all keep it up? Alright, it's less, lesson 4. And if you listen to the thread of them, they, 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 all, they really are all the same. They all flow together. If you listen to the thread of them. Because if we, the lesson for us is simply why faith. But if faith comes by hearing, faith is released by saying, out of the abundance of the heart you speak, therefore your words of faith, all of that flows together. Verse 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God. You must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. 
So if I were asked a question why faith, I would start there. You can't please God without faith. Faith, I forgot who said when I listened to so many tapes. But faith is the currency of God, the currency of heaven. Faith is the currency of heaven. Faith connects you to the promises of God. But knowing that God is love and that God is our Father, a loving Father, think about it this way. It does not please me as a father if I can't provide for my children. So why faith? Why? Because that allows my loving Heavenly Father to bless me. It connects me with him. The opposite of faith is fear. There's no neutral ground in our walk. Fear connects us to the other one. The devil has no power but what we give him. Not one hour of power does he have but what we give him. And see, the, the, that problem is conquered by first realizing that God loves you. Started off with, with lesson one being God inside minded. Get a greater picture of who you are in Christ Jesus. Get a revelation that Jesus died for you, paid the price for you. God so loved the world that he gave you, this only begotten son. Cement that in your heart, and that will take care of the devil problem. I give you y'all, I, I usually, I didn't do it last week, but usually I give you your lesson on spiritual warfare. And y'all, it's real simple. Just say no. I try to keep, I work hard to keep the thing simple. Just no. If you can tell the devil no, you got it every time. Faith and patience, if you add patience to your faith, you win every time. But if you can just learn to say no, just no. You, you beat him. And, and, and that, that settles the devil problem. Now, we just got to get ourselves built up to release our faith to receive what God has done for us. So that's, that's an extra lesson there. No charge. No. I want you to remember that. Walk away with that. Pass the opposite. I can overcome the devil by telling him no. But now, remember in the wilderness, Jesus says, it is written. It is written. So now, if you saying no, you got the word of God to back you up. But it would be real nice if you stayed in the Word so you know what was written, so you'd have some force behind it, you know. Because y'all tend to play with the devil too much. See, I'm, I'm, I'm making a great attempt to be nice. I, I, I fussed and preached last week. I, I'm being nice this week. So, just say, just say no, but get the Word on it. Get the Word on it. Put power behind your no, and you win, and you can just forget about the devil. Okay? Can y'all do that for me? Yes, sir. I mean, the youngest person in the country say no. Alright? Don't be rebellious against your parents. Be rebellious against the devil. Say, no, I ain't doing that. That ain't what the Bible says. That, that, that's not what the Bible says. It is impossible to please God without faith. Now, Romans 1.17 says the just shall live by faith. That's another answer to the question, why faith? The just shall live by faith, and again, uh, it's impossible to please God without. Two, that's, that's good enough right there. But faith is the currency of heaven. Faith is the, the conduit that connects you to your Father God. Faith brings to manifestation the promises of God. You know, confession is saying, is agreeing with what the Word says. You confess the Word, and God will manifest the Word. But you got to confess the Word to build it in your house. In your heart, so out of the heart, the the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We confess the word, but it's not in our heart in abundance, so there's no power behind it. Therefore, you keep confessing. It's not a it's not a good luck charm. It's the a force that will work on your behalf, and if we live by faith, if we live by faith. That's our lifestyle. So build faith and exercise your faith. He's given everyone the measure of faith. Build on it. Work it. Have it work for you and see it come to pass. There's a confidence to see. Answers to prayer builds confidence. If you answer one prayer here, answer it again. At whatever level you are, you get the word on it, 
You do what the word says. You confess the word. You walk in love. Galatians 5, 6 says, faith work of our love. That may be some of our problems. You know, you can't love your spouse. You probably ain't walking in love. Come on now. Uh -huh. I ain't got nothing with that, but watch yourself. Uh, it's, it's a dangerous person to ask your spouse what, what you can do to behave. I don't, I don't like that person too much. Are they going to answer that all? But to keep things straight and to fulfill what you need to do before God, if you got a, a godly spouse, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And mostly they are, most, mostly they are gracious and, and loving. And they don't let you down too hard. But listen to them. But listen to yourself. What aggravates you? That either reveals something that you need to fix, that may be your ministry and call that you're supposed to work on, or that may be just mess in your life that you need to handle. If you're getting aggravated by stuff out there, see how you can help fix it. If you're being aggravated internally by somebody telling you what you need to straighten up about yourself, get before God and fix it. A lot of people are going to give you uh, point out your problems and then maybe them or not you, but that's okay. Just get before God. Because I found out that sometimes the people have the right things to say, but their presentation is so bad. Yes, so you can't hear the message because the presentation is bad. But mature beyond that and say, Lord, do I need to hear something that he'll speak to you? Because he's been telling you the whole time anyway. But you had to get a different uh, uh, presentation because you wouldn't hear the God inside you. And he was framed at you to help you. But the Spirit of God is gentle and sweet. Back to the very beginning. Abide in him. Fall in love with him. So with that, I, I say let Colossians 3.15 be your guide. Let the peace of God rule your heart is what it says. Let the peace of God rule your heart. If that peace is missing, find out why. That's a good, that's a good walk. You're trying to make a decision and you can't find that peace, you probably don't need to do it. At least not that way. But now, if you find the peace of God in making your decisions, and stuff is tough, you can still walk through it because the peace of God directed you there. You can keep your peace through the mess. If you tap into God and say, I know that's God, the peace of God is guiding me. Yeah, I know that was God. I know that was God, so I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. Hallelujah. Why faith? Because the just shall live by faith, and it's impossible to please God without faith. Faith comes by hearing. Faith is released by saying. So that was lesson two, watch your mouth. Faith is released by saying. Say what the word of God says. Confession, true confession, is agreeing with the word. God will hold himself accountable to prove his word. But are you speaking his word? Get that now. Get, get that now. Whatever you're going through, get the word of God on. We can't hijack God, hold him up. But God is faithful. He swore by his own self. So his word is good. But so many of us, we have a casual relationship with the word. And we don't know if it's true or not. We don't, know if it's true. we don't know if it's true or not. Or we have not built it into us. It, it's just like a, a, a critical illness. The word of God says, by strikes I'm healed. My body says, I'm dying. The word of God would change the facts of your body. I say it this way, truth of the word would change the facts that's of the illness in your body. If you build it in abundance. So you stay in the word regardless of the bad report. You stay in the word. Get, get the right people to pray with you. I don't need you praying with me and wondering, oh man, he will die. You're the right person. You can't be praying for me. 
So I don't, I don't have a lot of people praying for me. And if I do have them pray for me, I give them the scripture that I'm standing on. I say, now pray the scripture for me, uh, and then pray in tongues. That's how I tell people to pray for me. I, I can't have them messing it up. There's power and agreement. But that's why being married is so important. The two are made one. So the devil, of course, is going to bring conflict in your marriage. Try to keep out of agreement. And I tell my counselors, it's not who's right, it's what's right. Mm -hmm. And the only what that's, the, that's always right is the word of God. So as a couple, let's find what the book says. And let's stand on the word together. The two are made one. One puts a thousand to flight, two puts ten thousand to flight. So me and my wife are ten times better, not two times better. We're ten times better. I was coming into agreement. In Matthew 18, verse 18, I, I want to read that. I don't know who 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 messed this up and drew that out of me, but let's go to Matthew 18. 18. Well, that's what I tell y'all, the message is on y'all. Pastor has studied for hours, but listening to the Spirit of God, he'll deviate from his notes to say what the Spirit of God said. So y'all need to come to church ready to receive. Pray for your man of God. Verse 18, and I'll start in the Amplified. Truly I tell you, what Whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unfaithful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. Okay. There's no poverty in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. So that's, that's easy. That's good. But whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. You see that word declare, talk about your mouth again. Use your mouth. Use your mouth. A lot of y'all have planted seed. Believe in God, and you don't keep your mouth on it. Put some pressure on the word. Put your mouth on it. Speak what the word says. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, now here's what I wanted to get to, harmonize together, make a symphony together, and whatever, anything and everything they may ask, it shall come to pass and be done for them by my Father in heaven. John 15, 7, we said, abide in my word. My word abide in you, that's what you will in the front of the past. That's your starting point. But verse 19, if you, the two of you on earth agree, harmonize together, make a symphony together. I like that. You know, I, I, I did high school band for a little while, and You'd be in a, a band contest on, on a castle piece that you practice and practice and practice. And it was a beautiful piece of music, but the oboe squeaked. Or the French horn was out of tune. And it messed up all of that practice. And that's, a, that's how it is about coming together in agreement. That's why my, my, my instructions are, here's the verse I'm standing on and pray in tongues. Keep us together. See, because we could be on the same sheet of music, but one of us a little bit out of tune. And it doesn't come together. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like this harmonize together. Make a symphony together. Now think about that as it as it pertains to marriage. And it don't have to be a married couple, it could be a, a, a singles, but you give them it's hard to come to that type of agreement or something anybody but your spouse. That's why I started with your spouse. But it could be your prayer partner. Some, some, you need to develop a friend in, 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 in the Lord. You need to develop somebody that you can, you can trust to have your best in mind and pray for you correctly and not manipulate you. Because most of the time our prayers are a witchcraft. We pray what we want. <laughs> and not what the word says. Some of y'all need to watch how y'all pray for y'all pastor. Y'all be praying y'all desires on the man of God and not what the word says. If you don't do nothing, say bless him, bring prosperity to him in every area of his life. I lift him up, Father, give him wisdom and understanding 
I thank you that he speaks the very oracles of God as he lifts it in me and then prays to us. I violate any force or uh, any demonic power against this life. I thank you for his help and his healing. Stick with the word. Your word says, by stripes, please heal. I thank you that he's healed, Father. Bless him. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. You don't mess it up with your prayer in tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, did I cover all of my messages for y'all today? Um, now, last week, what was my message last week? Okay, one person. Disappointments are not defeats. All right, we look back at this little spot. <laughs> but I brought it down to one point, and and the praise and worship sent me off in all these directions. Fall in love with Jesus, with His Word, and with His presence. Abide in me. Abide, abide, vitally connected. The branch that's not abiding is cut off and dies. Talk about pruning. Pull off those good works that are pulling you away from him. Because a lot of times we can do the work and forget why we're working. Spend time with him. Don't, don't, don't. You know, good, good devotional exercise. Pray in tongues. And read your Bible. Pray in tongues and read your Bible. Pray in tongues for 30 minutes, read your Bible for 30 minutes. Write the word, listen to a good tape, good worship music, uh, a lesson, ride home, and you can spend, that's that's an hour and a half of being in the word right there. Because I, <laughs> I work at a call center, supervisor, Trying to figure out how to get totally out of bed and just stop working and tired of these people now. <laughs> but I, you know, I retired, sat home, got tired of sitting home and went back to work. They want to pay for health insurance and all that stuff, but people getting on my nerves, time to stop. But I try to do what I'm preaching, I'm trying to walk it up. <laughs> I take a little abuse that I don't want to take and try to get them to listen and tell them what they do. And, and uh, I've messed up a few times. And most of the time I do all right. But they got on my nerves so, so hard last week. I guess the, the, the way that drove me to was all right. I had to go to lunch and pray in tongues for a whole hour to wash that out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, people are so rude. So they, you know, they are working in the DCL call center. So people that want to supervise them, they complain. I've yet to have somebody talk, well, maybe once or twice, to tell me how good my worker was. <laughs> but I've even said, well, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. So-and-so was all right, but the worker before him didn't sound like they knew what they were talking about, so I need you to explain this to me. It was a nice call. I told him what my worker said. Well, okay, I just was checking. That's an abuse of my time, but that's all right. Another lady, she's calling every other day. She's mad. Workers keep telling her to turn this in, turn this in. She hadn't turned it in yet. Well, I'm not, I can't change the rules for you, man. And he said, well, that's what your blank in the blank worker told me. You ain't doing me no blank in the blank good. Bam. One lady, 26 year young, young lady, this is what you need to do. Well, how come nobody ever told me that? Well, you got your notice, you got your letter, you call an accident about something else. So you're mad because you don't miss your stuff on time and you still had to turn it in. So I keep saying, this is what you need to do. I know that, but blah, 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 blah. Now nothing's going to happen until you turn this in. Turn it in, give us a few days, and we'll send your processor an uh, email to manage that. She just go on and on and on and on. You, you're not supposed to hang up on it. <laughs> You keep saying the same thing, you confuse. I said, no, ma'am, this, this is what you need to do. One man said, well, ain't you the supervisor? You can change the rules. I said, no, sir, I can't change the rules. It's, 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 get, it's getting rough out there. <laughs> Government, here it is, you know, work with people getting their food stamps and stuff. And I keep telling them, 
The government was not called to feed the people. That's the church part. And so I try to show some patience because it really it ought to be us doing it. So saints, we need to stop believing God for some real prosperity so people can come to us. Really, we ought to be feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. You got some programs going on, you really need to participate to do what you can do. But government without God is destined to fail. Government is trillions of dollars in the hole doing stuff that they're not ordained to do. Especially now that they want to kick God out of government and, and ordain stuff that ain't right. So God can't, can't bless that. Trillions of dollars in the hole and getting further in the hole, something's got to burst. I suggest y'all get out of debt. I suggest y'all get out of debt. We're trying to find a condo. Get the condo, sell a house, and get towed out of there. That's enough equity to be there. That's, that's what we're looking at. That's, that's what we're looking at right now. So it, it, it'll come together. At worst, I got a nice house, but I, I think I'm tired of dealing with negative people. <laughs> I mean, especially when you can't put the word on them like you know they need. I mean, if I had permission to preach at everybody that called fussing and cussing and complaining, I could enjoy it a little bit better. But when I got to bite my tongue, now, a couple times I slipped up. I, you know, I have, have to repent. I repent publicly. One client, I said, maybe just stupid, God. <laughs> that ain't nice. Supervisor supposed to be the last one to say, well, you can't say that. <laughs> and one day I said, you are so ungrateful. My goodness, you got your stuff. Bye. <laughs> but see, being retired and coming back, uh, I've already reached that threshold, so... <laughs> But I shouldn't go out being fine. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your tender mercies. We believe that we receive what you prepared for us today. So, Father, we embrace your word. We embrace the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Those things that we've done, that would that would uh, bring a yeah, I for a, a grieve you, Holy Spirit, we repent of and we thank you. We praise you and we worship you for your grace and your tender mercies. I plead the blood of Jesus, and I think that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness, that the blood of Jesus stands against the wicked one. And Father, before you, we stand in unbroken fellowship determined to abide in your word, to abide in your presence, to let your steps be, our steps be ordered, ordained, and established by you. I lift up this house, Father, I thank you for your abiding presence. I lift up our pastors, I lift up our members. But Father, as we spoke last week, give us a true compassion for the lost so that we will bring them in knowing that we are the light of the world, knowing that there's no salvation for mankind except through us. So build within us not only a love for you, but your love for the lost. We love you, we praise you, we worship you. I thank you, Father, for abundance supernatural abundance in every area of our lives and our finances and our bodies and our minds and our relationships father in the name of jesus your word proclaims that you surround us as with the shield uh, your favor surrounds us as with the shield and i think that your favor goes before us uh, uh, those that don't even know us those that think they dislike us we find favor with them father our steps are ordered, ordained, and established by you. So we thank you that we walk the path you ordained for us before the very foundations of the earth. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for your goodness and your tender mercies. Amen. Amen. And amen.